Hello class, this is Miss Terry. We are going to uh, begin working in our learning packet uh, for April 6, 2020. Okay, you should have a learning packet entitled Analyzing Key Ideas uh, in Text. So I need you to go secure your packet, bring your packet back, but when you come, bring a pencil, a sharpened pencil, and notebook paper. While you get those things, I'll wait. And when you return, we will begin. Everyone has their learning packet, a shopping pencil, and notebook paper. We will begin. Okay. Title of the title of our learning packet this week is analyzing key ideas in a text. In this learning packet, we will review our learning standard RIKID one, where we analyze a text to see what it says explicitly, and then draw logical conclusions. But also, we're going to look at five key textual evidence to support our conclusion. So this is a review standard for us. Okay. Now, so again, by this time, everyone should be should be back with their learning materials. What you will need for this lesson is your learning packet for April the 6th. You should have notebook paper to take notes and you should have a sharpened pencil okay if you have a sharpened pencil say check if you have the notebook paper say check if you have the learning packet check for job now we will move on let's go over our learning targets for the lesson during this lesson we will analyze how often we develop a key individual event or idea and information text by using facts, examples, and antidotes. Then we will also identify the differences between facts, examples, and antidotes. Now I will let you know that in this lesson we're going to analyze how an author develops an, in, an individual event. Okay? So we're not going to look at individuals or ideas. Uh, well, actually, we might look at ideas, but we're definitely going to look at it again. Okay? Now, for today's vocabulary, if we are going to be successful in today's lesson, we must understand the following vocabulary. So you must be able to define, identify, and use first word, that. Your second vocabulary word, supporting detail. Your third vocabulary word, antidote. Okay? So if you are going to be successful in this lesson, you must be able to define, identify, and use the following vocabulary terms. Facts, supporting detail, and antidote. Next. So, what do you already know about today's vocabulary? Okay. So, I want so we're going to use a method called think, think about it, talk about it, write about it. So, first, we're going to think about our vocabulary term. Then, we're going to share it with our partner. We're going to try and talk with a partner. Then, we're going to write about it. Okay. So, let's get ready to start. Right. The first vocabulary word that we're going to think about is facts. What are facts? Take time to think. So now I want you to turn and talk to your partner. What are facts? You may begin.
Good. Now, I need to bring your attention back to me. And I want you all to go to the next term, which is support in detail. I want you to think about it. What are supporting details? Now turn and talk to your partner. Explain to your partner what are supporting details. Okay, all, all is on me. Let's come on back to our next vocabulary word, which is antidote. This word is pronounced antidote. Okay, so now I need to, to explain to your partner everything that you know about antidote. Okay, now before you, before you explain, let's go back. I need you to think, think about it. What is antidote? Now, I want you to come back and I want you to talk to your partner. Explain to your partner what are antidotes. Great. Now, now that you have discussed the term, Fact, support in detail, and antidote. Um, we're going to share. So, and then we are going to write. Okay. So, did you say to your partner that facts are statements that can be proven? If so, say check. Did you say to your partner or explain to your partner that support in detail? Give more information about a sense like this. If so, say check. As you were turning and talking to your to your partner, did you say to your partner, antidote are brief story about real life events that is often amusing or entertaining, but they are intended to make a point. Did you tell your, your partner that? If so, you were correct. Say check. Okay. Now, so now we have thought about fact, supporting details, and notes. We have talked about fact, supporting details, and antidotes. Now we are going to write. Okay? I need you to take out the pencil and your paper, and you have. A minute and a half to copy down your vocabulary. You may begin. Let's go. On your paper, you should have title, vocabulary words. Then you should number one, skip a line two, skip a line three. Your first vocabulary term. Is fat. Everybody write down fat. Good. And now take this sign, copy the meaning for the word fat. The word fat. Now, let's move on down to number two. On number two, on number two, I need you to write down the word supporting detail. Supporting detail. Now, 
I'm not copying down the mean for the point of detail. Let's move on down to vocabulary of word number three. Antidote. Write the word antidote. Copy down the meaning for the word antidote. So now we have gone through, we have thought about our vocabulary of words, we have talked about our vocabulary of words, and we have written about our vocabulary of words. Now I want everyone to go on and move into the next part. So one of our objectives was that we were going to be able to identify um, that example in detail. So I want you all to so let's find out what we already know. What do we already know? Okay. Are you able to identify a key idea when you see it written in a text? Are you able to identify a supporting detail when you see it in a text? And then more importantly, are you able to tell the difference between a key idea and a supporting detail? Okay. So I want to look at the, the, the two statements that we have on our phone. Statement number one says, Athletes from many different countries compete in the Olympics. Now ask yourself, is that a key idea or is it a supporting detail? Then move down to number two. The U.S. swimmer Michael Phelps won Olympic medals in 2012. Is that statement, is it a key idea or is it a supporting detail? Ask yourself. Okay. Now, I want everyone to go back to number one. Read it silent to yourself. Is that a key idea or is it a supporting detail? Think about it. Let's answer. If you answer that number one is a key idea, then you are correct. Okay, let's move on down to number two. The U.S. swimmer Michael Phelps won Olympic medals in 2012. Think about it. Is that statement, is it a key idea or a supporting detail? Think about it. Now, what's your answer? Okay, if you say it, that that's supporting detail, you are correct. Okay? That is supporting detail. Good job. If you answer key idea for number one, supporting detail for number two, give yourself a pat on the back. Good job. Now, move to our next slide. Now, how well can you identify um, the following as either a fact, example, or an antidote? Okay. Is the statement listed here? Is this statement, is it, does it identify a fact? Does it identify an example? Does it identify an antidote? So let's see. I was cheering our team as I watched the 2012 Olympic swimming event on television. I cheered so loudly that my throat was sore the next day and I could barely speak. Now, is that a fact? Is it something that can be proven? Is it an example? Is an example something that supports or proves the fact or gives information about a fact? Okay? Or is it an antidote? Is it a story about an, a, a real life event? And does it make a point? 
Frolicking. Hmm. It seems to me that the writer is telling the story. It's not an event that happens that happened to, to her or him in his life. Okay? So it's going to be a personal story. Because I know that it's a story. And I know immediately that this is an antidote. Okay? It is an antidote. Okay? And he's trying, and he's trying to prove a point that he yells so loudly to let the game that he end up with his fourth rope. Okay? Great job. Now, let's move on to today's lesson. For today's lesson, what will we do? Okay, first, we will read a historical text about Lost City. Okay, so we're going to look at a, oh, an individual event, or in, in some cases, ideal. Okay, so it was an event of a of, city of lost, or an idea, of the idea of a concept of city being lost. Okay, so then we're going to look at, next we're going to learn to recognize the fact, example, the antidote, provide more information about the text to like it. Okay, so if they provide more information, if my facts, my examples, and my antidotes provide more information about my text central idea, then my facts, my examples, and my antidotes, they must be my supporting details. So today we're gonna look at we're gonna look at facts, examples, and, and antidotes as supporting details, and then we're gonna look at of the key idea of lost city in historical text. So we're going to begin our lesson with our guiding question. This question is going to guide us. It's going to guide our reading. Okay. Why do writers use antidotes? And we know that antidotes are stories that are intended to entertain, and they are intended to make a sense. So why? Why do writers use antidotes? If I open the packet to page 27, we get our first text. Lost City. Okay, before it begins, let's make sure we have a clear understanding of what an antidote is. Okay, remember antidotes are short, interesting stories about real events. They are that they are intended to be entertaining and uh, amusing. Even funny sometimes. So remember, they are all so informative. They are intended to make a point. Okay. Next, and antidotes also they help readers to understand um, unfamiliar ideas, unfamiliar concepts, unfamiliar events. Okay. So today we're going to read our passage to our city. Silently first, then we're going to read it out loud, okay? So everybody just look at Lost City. At the moment, read that passage silently to yourself. Now we're going to read the passage. And then I want you to consider um, what information is being given about Lost City. Right? Lost cities. Lost cities are places that were once well populated, but whose locations were related to God. In a few cases, there is physical proof that a city once existed. Other lost cities live only in stories. Is the lost city of El Dorado ruled by a king covered in gold and In 1594, Englishman Sir Walter Raleigh 
their expedition to South America to find the mythical golden city. He did not find the city, but upon his return, he claimed to have done so. Stories such as Raleigh help keep the idea of finding lost things alive. So, let's see. So, what information is this article telling me about lost things? Okay. Well, I know that in this article, it tells me that once the lost cities were once well populated, populated, right? We're populated. Talk about I think of population. So population, people. So that means that uh, that these lost cities had a lot of people. They once had a lot of people, but the location of those cities and the uh, they were later forgotten, okay? So the location was later forgotten. Then, and in some cases, the cities were, there was no trace those cities ever existed. Then there are other ones that there were traces. Now, the ones that were not, that there was, there was not a trace of, those cities were only remembered to score. Okay, so that means so in my lost city, there was there were cities that were literally lost. They were they were one one time they were well populated, then all of a sudden location was either lost or forgotten. They were forgotten. Okay, so and in some cases the places left physical evidence, and other places and other other places there was no evidence left. So. You only learn about those cities through stories that were passed down over generations. Okay? So now, then it goes in paragraph two, and it starts talking about a lost city. The lost city of Edelwater. So what I learned about the lost city of Edelwater. One, it had a key. Two, it had lots of gold. Okay? And then later in 1594, Sir Walter Raleigh decided he wanted to go and find the lost cities that alive. So when he went out to find the city, the story goes on to say that he never found the city. But when he came back, he returned home. He told people that he had it. Okay, so he told them that he that he had done so. So through her Walter Raleigh story, the lost city of Eldorado continues to live throughout history. Now, let's go back to the article. I want you to, this time, to circle the name of the person mentioned in the text. Take your pencil and go on and circle, circle the person that was mentioned. So, most of you all should have circled. Most of us should have circled. So, walk it out. And I put it. It's gone. And that's in paragraph two. So, I like it. I'm going to highlight why you circle. Okay. So, we got to walk, walk it out. Then, now, I want you to go back and now I want you to. And the antidote. What is the antidote that is in this text about the lost city? I want you to go back and underline that. Okay? Or the antidote about the okay. Go back and underline the antidote about the person. And consequently, that city. So now I can go back to paragraph number two, and I'm going to underline. Here's my story. In 1594, the Englishman third Walter Raleigh made the expedition to South America to find the mythical Golden Key. 
He did not buy him the city, but on his return, he claimed to have done so. So you should underline that the antidote. Okay. Now, I want everybody to go back down to us to look at our chart at the bottom of the page. In the chart, what you'll see is three columns. So in the first column, we're looking at facts. We know that facts are things that can be true. So what fact is included in this article? Then we're going to look at an example. So what is an example that's being presented in this article? And then finally, the antidote. What is the antidote? So first, facts, okay? Okay, first we want to know what are the facts that we are trying to prove in the city law article. Uh, law, I mean, in the article, law city. So we know that in Lost City, we're, we're trying to prove that guess what? some cities were actually lost. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to cite you. I'm going to go and find where the article says there were cities lost. So I'll look at, the, at my first paragraph. And then it says, Lost cities are places that were once well populated, but whose who locations were later forgot. Those are my Lost cities. Okay? So then it goes over. So, okay, so what what place was well populated and then location was later forgotten? So the article just gives me an example of a city that was lost. El Dorado. So El Dorado, and, and he knows he just put El Dorado. He wrote a complete sentence. El Dorado is one example of a lost city. Then we go over to our story, okay? And what in, in our story, or our antidote, the author or the writer of the of Irene, he decides that he's going to summarize the story, okay? So he starts out with who? Okay? Who? So Walter Raleigh. What did he do? He had an expedition to South America to find El Dorado and told people he had to see it. Even though he had his right. Now, during this story, what you should have learned is why would an author choose to use an antidote? Why did the author use the story of Sir Walter Rob? Why did he use that story? Okay, so. We learn that writers use antidotes to keep their readers interested and to help them better understand familiar, unfamiliar ideas or concepts. Okay. Right. Writers use antidotes to want to engage their readers to keep them interested in their writing. Then also, they want to help them to better understand that unfamiliar idea. They want you to better understand how cities got lost. Okay. Now, we well, want to turn to page 28. And at page 28, our article is entitled Atlantic Lost City. Mm -hmm. Okay. In this article, you're going to read. A historical account about another lawsuit, a lens. Okay. Then you're going to identify that and examples that elaborate and tell more about the simple idea or the key concept, which is law city, right? So let's go back and look at it, right? So in our last story, Law City, we focus on antidote. Now in this story, Atlantis, we're going to focus on focus our learning on facts and examples. Okay, so to get our lesson, we're going to start with why do writers use facts and examples? Why would a writer add facts and examples to an article that he's written? Everybody look at Atlantis, Lost City. First, I want you to read a silently. 
Then we're going to read together aloud, okay? Atlantis lost. Everybody, let's come back. We all can read together. Atlantis lost city. Archaeologists and writers have long speculated about the legendary city of Atlantis and its location. According to one theory, Atlantis was an island empire located off Europe in the Atlantic Ocean. It was home to an advanced civilization that existed thousands of years ago. The people of Atlantis tried to dominate the Mediterranean region of the world. Their plans for ruling the area were cut short when the Athenians defeated their army. Soon afterwards, a massive earthquake devastated the land, causing it to sink beneath the ocean. A second theory suggests that Atlantis may have existed on the island of Thera in the Aegean Sea. The island sank into the sea after a major volcanic eruption. There is no evidence, however, to support either theory. So let's get ready to start. Right? So the article says, take away the Does the writer include to tell me more about the, about the, um, of Atlantis. One stop. So if I go back to read the article, it tells me that the, uh, the, the, the archaeologists they speculated about the city of Atlantis. So as I read, I'm wondering what's this word speculating? Hmm. I know that the prefix S P E C spec means to look. So I'm a spectator in a game, for instance. Spectators, they look at the football game or the basketball game. If you wear eyeglasses, they were once called spectacles. And we know that eyeglasses help us to see or to look. So is the writer saying that archaeologists are looking at the city of Atlantis? Maybe not literally, but they're using their mind eye to look at it. They're wondering, they're wondering what happened to this city of Atlanta. What can I find out about the city of Atlanta? Okay, so we, the article tells us that as, arch, as archaeologists speculated or wondered about the city of Atlanta, they came, they came up with two theories. One theory, and I say a theory, what is a theory? What's this word theory? So I can say, I can say, I guess. Okay, it's kind of theory is kind of like a hypothesis and find an educated guess. But theories aren't just wild guess. They're educated because when they are based on evidence. My theories are based on evidence. So using their evidence, the, the authors came the the archaeologists came up with the first theory. Look at paragraph one. The first theory that the one, the Atlantis was an island. Okay, it was located off Europe in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, then it says that they were they were advanced, so it means that they were really smart and well organized, and that that that, that it lasted for thousands. Atlantis existed for thousands of years. Okay, they also tell me that 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 Atlantis. 
wants to dominate or take over in the Mediterranean region. So they they put together some plans to where they will rule to where they will rule the the uh, Mediterranean area. And they had an army. And they were going to use their army to take over. But their army was defeated by the Athenians. Okay? Then it says, well, after they were defeated, Atlantis was rocked by a massive earthquake, which caused it to sink to the ocean. That's the first theory. Then the second theory, I come down to paragraph two. The second theory says that Atlantis was an island that was located in Syria, in the in the Aegean Sea. Then it says that Atlantis sank because of a volcano erupted. But then the author goes on to clue by saying, guess what? There is no real evidence to support either of these theories. So let's go back and see. So now we have Atlantis. Okay? It was a city. Okay? There was no evidence left that Atlantis existed. But scientists have, archaeologists have speculated using two theories. Okay? So first before we go on, let's see what those two theories have done. Okay. Okay, the first both theories talk about where Atlantis is located. Okay. So first one says Atlantis is located in Europe of the Atlantic Ocean. The second theory says that Atlantis was uh located um on the island of Sierra in the Green Sea. Okay. Now as you notice that the second theory doesn't talk about Atlantis army. They're talking about its desire to take over the Mediterranean area. It only talks about how Atlantis was defeated. Okay? How it became lost. Which goes back to our concept of what lost. So, so the first paragraph says that Atlantis was lost because why? It was shaken by an earthquake. Then it fell into the sea. That's the last sentence in my first paragraph. Then I go to, go to the to, the second sentence in my second paragraph, it says that Atlantis sank into the sea because of a major volcanic eruption. Okay. Now, let's move on down to our chart. Okay. On this chart, please notice that you have um, two columns. The first column is the next column. The second column is your example column. Okay. So in your fact column, we want to look to see what what does both theories have in common. Um, what two facts do they have in common? Well, the first fact we're looking at is that they're talking about the location. Both theories want to look at the location of a land. So our writer decided that they would just cite the evidence. That means write it word for word from paragraph number one. So let's go to paragraph number one, and it says, one theory is that Atlantis was located off Europe in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. Then it says, another theory, like I'm down to paragraph two, is that Atlantis may have existed on the island of Sierra in the Aegean Sea. Okay. So I guess they, they really didn't cite it. They kind of paraphrased it, right? So they kind of told us that what? In the, in, in the first theory, the Atlantis was located off Europe in the Atlantic Ocean. Then the second theory says that, hey, another theory is that Atlantis may have existed on the island of Europe in the Aegean Sea. So both of these facts deal with the location of Atlantis. Then they go over to the next column. So now, now they're going to give me an example. Okay? So now I'm going to get an example uh, that relates the first theory to the second theory. So both of those theories talk about how Atlantis end up being destroyed. Okay. So let's see. The first theory, according to paragraph number one, says 
says that soon after, afterwards, a massive earthquake devastates the island, causing it to sink beneath the sea. So now, I know that one, according to the first theory, that Atlantis was lost or became a lost city because it was wrecked by a massive earthquake that devastated the island, causing it to sink beneath the ocean. Now, then what we need to do as a class, we need to go back to our second theory. How does our second theory say that explain the disappearance of Atlantis? How did Atlantis become a lost city based on our second paragraph? I need you to go up to paragraph two and underline. How did Atlantis vanish? Okay, so we should have underlined the island of Atlantis. Thank you. The island of Atlantis sank into the sea after a major volcanic eruption. So we should have we should have, we should have underlined that. The island sank into the sea after a major volcanic eruption. So now I want you to come down to your chart. And I want you to write. How does the second theory say? That Atlantis became a lost city. How did it vanish? How was it lost? So we should be writing what we underline in the box. Now, to answer our guiding question, why do writers use fact and example? When they write, then, writers use fact and example to help their readers better understand unfamiliar ideas, unfamiliar concepts, okay? Unfamiliar events. In this case, we're looking at the um, concept or the event of a disappearance or of a land or we're looking at loss. So our, our overall concept is what loss is. Okay. So we're looking at do you better understand how a land is okay. based on your fact and your example. <clears throat> now I want everyone to go and this is what we're going to work with the partner. With your partner, you're going to get the seven cities of gold from page 29. It's going to page 29. I'm going to ask you to read the text finally. Then I want you to read the text with your partner. Then I want you to underline the sentence that provides key information about how Coronado felt about, felt once he reached. Ebola. Okay, read that again. Once you online the census that provides information about how Coronado felt once he reached Ebola. Then I want you all to use quest and get to answer the multiple choice questions. Okay? And don't forget to use the hint in your sidebar to have to find your answer. Then I want you to go down to complete the section on your uh, on page 29 that, that's entitled for your thinking. And then, then I want you to talk to, go back and talk with your partner. Tell your parent why you tell your partner <clears throat> why the other choices, mm -hmm. answer choices did not illustrate how Nas's story of the Okay, let me give you five minutes. Then I'll be back with you. We have five minutes in which to work. Maybe yeah. again.
Have you come back? So we're looking at the uh, seven seals of gold. Okay? Your first, your first tool was to read through the seven seals of gold. Okay? So let's go through this for you. Uh, five centuries ago, a monk named Marcos de Naza explored the land that will one day be called New Mexico. Naza told fantastic stories about Cibola, a place also known, also called the seven seals of gold. He claimed that he saw cities full of coal. Spanish explorer Francisco Vasquez de Conara, Conara, Spanish explorer Francisco Vasquez de Coronada and his soldiers set out for Cibola when Nazra entered the When they arrived, however, Coronado was 
persuaded with this one to find a settlement of small pueblos to settle Golden City. One account tells that Naz admitted that he had not actually seen the Golden himself. So now, so now that we have read, okay? So our first, our first job was to really was under the close read activity on the top. Our first close read activity said underline the attention that provides information about how Cornell felt once he reached the boat. So I know that in, in paragraph one, it mentions Nod reading the boat, but it does not mention Cornell. So I moved out to the In the first instance of paragraph two, there you go, five. And this soul that quays they coordinate. So now the I want to know which sentence tells me how coordinate felt. How you felt once you met, once you reach the boat. So standing before and sit so that says they coordinate and his soul set out the course. For Nas and his Does that sentence tell me how he felt? No. I'm looking for words that show feelings. Okay? So, when they arrived, however, Coronado was likely to see to find a settlement of small pebbles in several golden cities. So now in this sentence, he said he was disappointed. So I know this appointment is a feeling. I'm going to underline this. You should have underlined when they arrived. When they arrived, however, Coronado was slightly disappointed to find a settlement of small pueblos instead of a golden city. Now I want to move down to our we'll move down to our um our multiple choice question. Okay? We're gonna start with our finish. We're going to read the question. We're going to circle and underline uh, important words in our question. Then we're going to go yeah, to the Then we're going to eliminate our answer. Then we're going to select an answer. Then we're going to talk about our answer, okay? So the answer is the first one. I'm going to follow in my question. Which sentence from the text best illustrates how Coronado was affected by novel sport? So, let's see. Which words are important? I know that. This illustrates how Coronado was affected by Nazi's story. No words are important. So I'm going to look at which sentence. I'm going to look at sentence. Illustrates how Coronado was affected by Nazi's story. That's going to do a circle around affected. Because I know that that word affected me. If something affects me, it affects my emotion. It affects my feelings. So this question is really asking me, how did he feel once he, uh, how, how did he feel about Nas' story? So let's go see, right? So I know that when I go through my A, B, C, D, I'm looking for an answer that shows how Coronado felt, right? So let's see. A, Nas told fantastic stories about Cibola, a place also called the Seven Kids of Gold. So I asked myself, who is this answer to us about? It's about Nas. So it's not about Coronado. So I'm going to eliminate that. So I'm going to eliminate this. I'm going to eliminate that. So now, let's, 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 let's go to see. When they arrive, however, Coronado was greatly disappointed to find a settlement of small pueblos in San Golden City. So, is this sentence about Coronado? Yes. So I'm going to hold this answer to it. I'm not going to eliminate that one. Is it my answer? I'm not sure. So I need to go through all four. Let's see. On C, he claims he saw cities full of gold. Who claims to have seen cities full of gold? That was not, that wasn't Coronado. So I'm going to eliminate C. Now, let me, let me look at, now I need to go down and look at the 
Spanish explorer Francisco Vasquez Coronado and his soldiers set out for the boat of Bonanza and the God. Is this sense about Coronado? Yeah. So I'm going to keep selection A. I'm, I'm sorry, selection B and D. And I'm going to choose my answer between B and D. Which one talks about how Coronado yeah. So in B, I see the word disappointed. I mean, that's a feeling. Disappointed. So that's a feeling. So I'm, my answer is to us will be, selection will be C. I choose C. Now, why did I not choose C? Because it's not about, it's not about, that selection, answer selection is not about Coronado. It's about not. So now, why did I choose C? It's about Coronado. But it does not tell me how he felt. It only tells me that, hey, Coronado and, and his soldiers knew not to have a die. They have been fine to mold. Now, you're supposed to go a little further on show your thinking. Okay. On show your thinking, you have to explain how the story or the antidote about not the his story help you understand how Coronado felt when he reached the mode. So, using my personal feelings, if someone tells me that my event is really fun, and I'm excited about going to my event, and then when I get there, all the machines are broken. The bowl and I is not working. The rope, the rope line is closed off. So now I'm disappointed. So now I, so I understand how Coronado felt. Coronado was with his soldiers. They had planned to go to a city that was full of gold. And when they got there, there was no gold. There's just houses. Just regular little houses. A regular village. There's nothing majestic or magical about uh, the bowl. Now, I want you to take this time. Take 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 about 30 seconds. I want you to explain to your partner where why the other answer choices were not good selection for uh, that were not good answers for that question. Not 30 seconds. So. Yeah. Now, this is where you're going to get work along. You got to do this in, on your own time at home. So, the next story, everybody turn to page 30. On page 30, we have a story of the search for Elder Rod. You have to work independently. That means by yourself. Okay? Well, sorry as usual, you have to read the text. And you have to reread the text. This time, you're going to be looking for information. So let's make sure we're looking for I want you to look over to the side at the study button. Now, your study button, there is your direction for posting. I want you all to go through it and actually read it. Look for the, uh, look for the answer to your, um, your posting, um, your posting section, okay? So let's go first. First, you're going to read the text document. Then you're going to reread the text. Then you're going to underline the sentence that discuss the actual events that occurred. Then you want to look at what example of riches were presented in El Dorado and the need for conservation. Then you're going to underline the sentence in paragraph 2 and 4 to get information about these areas as well. So with your annotation, you want to underline the sentence that discusses the actual events that occurred. Then you want to look for examples of riches that, that were present in um, El Dorado and the Musical Region. Then you're going to underline the sentence 
and paragraph two and four, you're going to make about the areas of width, okay? Then you're going to move down to page page 31. You answer the number two of questions. You have question number one and two. You're going to use a hint on the side to help you answer your question. And then you have a written response. You're going to write your written response on your notebook, right? Okay? And that is question number three. Okay? Then once you have finished question three, I want you all to turn the question. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Once you have finished question three, you're going to move to your next story, which is going to be from the secrets of the lost city of Z. You're going to work independently. That's on page 32. Okay? You're going to follow the same set of directions. Now you don't have a study break. You don't have close to these directions. Okay? So now you have to internalize what you learn from doing your close to these directions and also from the, from the hit in your study break. Okay? So now we're going to read the hit silently. Finally, then we're going to reread that text. Okay? Then the second time we read, we're going to look for key facts, examples, and antidotes. Okay? We're going to annotate those. We're going to underline, we're going to, we're going to circle information that's important. Which is important to our key idea, which is what? The lost city. And this case, going to be the lost city of the city. Then you're going to do your written response, okay? And your written response is question number four. On uh, question number four, you're going to write that on your notes. Right? You're going to label question four, and you also you're going to write write the title of the article beside it. So on both written responses, you're going to write the number and you're going to write the name of the article before you write your response, okay? So that'll be question number four. Now until Monday. To complete this packet, take your time, okay? Uh, uh, take your time, and we'll review the answers on Monday for uh, those uh, for the last two articles, uh, The Secret of the Lost City of You, and and the search for the other okay? Now, let's go and close this lesson out. So we've come to the end of this lesson. Let's go through some things that we learned in the lesson. Let's see what we learned. Okay, and our closure during this lesson, you were getting two questions. One question was why do writers use antidotes? Think about it. Talk it over with your partner. So, if you said that writers use antidotes once to tell a story that would make this writing more interesting, um, and that story would be about a, an event in his life, but it's also designed to be interesting, but also to make a point, then you are correct. So, why do writers, and also, also, it helps the readers to better understand the key, the key idea, or the main idea, or the central idea, okay? And it also helps, um, also helps the reader to understand something that is unfamiliar to them. Okay, now, let's move to our next one. Why do readers use facts and examples? Think about it. Talk it over with your partner. Now, if you said that readers use facts and examples to provide additional information about our key idea, our single idea, or our main idea, then you will correct. They use so facts and examples, they even antidote their supporting details. They give us more information about our single idea our main idea or our key idea. Okay? All the In close. The major takeaway 
that I want you to take from this lesson is writers include fat examples, antidotes that tell more about key ideas in order to keep the reader interested in the text and to help the reader better understand the ideas. I thank you for your time. I ask that you work diligently on the two articles that have been signed. Uh, I will get back to you on Monday to make sure that you have completed them and we will go through our answers. I ask that you work hard. Don't wait till Monday when I go over the answers and then and then try to um, circle them and get you back on it. I want you to be a true. Work, work, work. Do your You can do it. Okay? But also understand that not only are you working on these articles, you still have you still have your rework articles to work on. You also have your um you have ready time to get me. Make sure you get sixty sixty minutes of our ready time. I'll get back with you on Monday evening. Okay. I want you to make sure that also on Monday I need you to go over to Gasman to pick up your learning package. Have a great rest of the night. Have a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Work hard. Study hard. And do your best. Be your best. Why? Because we are the best. So, I look forward to speaking to you again next day. Stay, stay home. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you, Steve.